So, you join me down in my man cave, basement, I don't know what we want to call it, family cave. The family is invited. And this is like a, just kind of an update video on what's been going on with the channel and also closing out a little bit more about talking about the boot fitting topic that we've been talking about, kind of some of the developments of the liners that I've been using in the boots. So, let's dive in. <laughs> So hello and welcome to my uh, studio, I guess, and this is going to be where I'm going to be filming a lot of my videos, so I'm going to give you a little tour of this place in a minute, and then also we're going to talk about some of the liners that I've been using in my ski boots this season, and some of the developments of those boots and how they've been working and stuff like that. This is a real cat, this is Harry, he's joining us apparently today. So a little bit about this space, at the end of last year, me and my friend Patrick had been doing a business together called Switchback Chamonix and it was all about bike servicing and suspension servicing for mountain bikes and we were based out of this kind of workshop which is the, basically the basement of my house. The business kind of was going well but Patrick had a contract on the World Cup circuit and he didn't really feel like he wanted to put more time into this. I didn't have any aspirations to become a bike mechanic. And the other things that we wanted to do with that business, we kind of got dead ended at various different places. So we decided to go our separate ways for the time being, keep switch back kind of on the back burner if we ever wanted to like take it up again. But that did mean that it freed up this space for me and something that I really wanted to do for a while is get going with this YouTube channel, do more content, make more videos. And having a space like this is just gonna be fantastic for doing that because I can come down, set up my lights, set up my camera and just do a video. So great little update there. Hopefully should mean that I can get some more videos done pretty busy with guiding, but I'm trying to kind of bridge the gap so I can have a nice mix of both. A little bit of guiding, a little bit of video making, doing my own adventures, spending time with my family, just trying to get the balance right, basically. Okay, so <clears throat> here's a little tour of the kind of studio workshop space. So yeah, it's a pretty cool space, but it's still kind of a basement. So it's kind of like unfinished uh, floor. It's kind of concrete that's been painted, but the paint's kind of chipping off a little bit. We got this nice rug down anyway, and that kind of works. Red couch, and yeah, this is kind of where I film a lot of my videos. Actually, behind here, I put some bolts. I've got a belay set up there, so I can do some filming when I take take the map down, get rid of the couch because that's on coaster wheels. And yeah, various things here: ice axes, snow shovels. This might come in handy for. Uh, talking through various topics. So this corner, we've got the ski boot rack. Yeah, so all the liners, ski boot, heater, dryer thing. I've got my bags that are kind of like pre-packed, ready to go. So that's my sort of general guiding bag, off-piece skiing bag, bigger bag for ski fly missions potentially, and an ice climbing bag back there that doesn't have anything in it at the moment because no ice climbing. There's all the ropes. Up here I've got like socks, goggles, and bars ready to go. Got my sunglasses. Things like radios, transceivers, uh, ropes, you know, all that kind of stuff that gets used quite a lot on this side. Little kind of workstation bench thing. So I've got like everyday work gear stuff in there, you know, like maps, compasses, all that sort of stuff and then just various bits and pieces that I use kind of fairly regularly. These Yeti bags have really changed my life actually. I don't think I could live without it now. Basically I have my ski boots in there um, and like a bottle of water, passport, things like that. And that's what I bring with me from down here with my work bag kind of up to the car. So yeah, pretty handy way of doing it. I might even get the bigger version of that as well. So these lights are kind of annoying because they're kind of bulky but they actually fit underneath this workbench here. 
so that's kind of handy can also get rid of this stool as well yeah more boxes so i've got crampons harnesses this is like other bits and pieces for skiing like snow climbing plates and uh, ski crampons then i've got hats and goggles in there skins and gloves so those are the sort of things that i use every day so it's kind of nice to be able to just reach in and grab things out i might do a better job of those boxes so they're a little bit more like like you know drawers so i can pull them out a little ways but yeah kind of works here we got all my kind of hardware up and hanging up on the wall so it's quite easy to sort of build a quick rack for the day if i need to just various little tools that are handy coming over this way this is basically like the bike corner of the workshop so i've got my tools in there so everything for my bike i've also got a big vice and yeah just other little hand tools as well so for example you know torque wrench bits and drills shop towel the reason that's a bit messy is because my daughter likes to play with it and pull it off so yeah somewhere to keep some files and bits and pieces in there underneath here i've got compressed air i've got a vacuum i've got a pressure washer and then there's a a bike stand in here as well that I'll pull out in the summer when I'm doing a bit more biking. Air hose as well, so compressed air on a hose so I can take that outside and clean or use it to clean bikes out. This is the other entryway. It's a little bit of a mess out there at the moment, but yeah. Got my helmets ready for biking. This is kind of like the least inspiring corner. It's just all a bunch of boxes and random tools and stuff like that, but yeah got the ping pong table that's a very important thing and it's just about big enough in here to have a bit of fun playing ping pong it's a little bit tight and it's a bit too low but nah, it's kind of fun and i can always wheel it outside and put it out in the garden as well over on this side we've got all my jackets hanging up here as well a few extra bags a little heater just to make it a little bit more pleasant down in here so yeah that's pretty much the whole workshop so that's kind of the update of this video and the topic really is about like the ski boot liners that I've been using this winter and what's been working, what hasn't been working and kind of why I've decided to go with certain liners over others. So a few weeks ago I did a video about the ski boot quiver that I'm using and if you haven't seen that video it's probably worth checking that out first and basically I have the Zero G Tour Pro as my main do it all boot basically and then either side of that I have a Nordica Doberman race boot which is modified with tech inserts and at the other end of the spectrum I have the Zero G Peak which is not the carbon version it's the plastic cuff version. I've mostly been using the Zero G Tour Pro boot this winter and I tried it with a couple of different liners. I was going to do a kind of a comparison video of skiing in different liners in that boot but never got around to it. It didn't really seem like it would be that fun to just go up somewhere and just change ski boot liners so I just kind of used different liners, kind of figured out what worked for me. So initially when I got that boot, I had the Coaches liner, which is the boot that's above the Zero G Tour Pro. And it did feel good, but there was a little bit of movement in my heel and I really don't like that sensation. I have a pretty narrow, skinny heel. So finding a liner that locks me down is quite difficult. The stock liner just didn't work for me at all. I would have had to have stuck so much extra bits of sticky foam onto the outside of it or use one of those plastic heel cup things. I just really didn't want to do that. I wanted a liner that could just work and be solid. So that's when I got drew more towards the zip fit. And I've actually been using this liner, the zip fit GFT for the last few months now. And I've got to say, I've been pretty impressed with how this liner is working. So this is the updated version from the liner that I had in the video that I posted before. And they've made a couple of changes. So they've got rid of the metal eyelets down here and replaced it with softer webbing eyelets. I have actually snapped a pair of laces. Uh, so yeah, the laces don't last forever, but I mean, laces never do. But the rest of the liner is looking like it's in really good shape. There's a little bit of wear on the heel here from stepping into the ski boot, because I find that with these liners, you can't just have them in the ski boot and 
then step into the liner, you have to put the liner on first and then step into the ski boot. This updated version also has a Velcro patch at the back for the spoiler, and I did have a spoiler on for a little bit, but actually I have a modification on my boots, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit, which means that I don't actually need that spoiler anymore. I feel like I'm at the exact right angle of lean with that modification. But one thing I did do is then put a small rubber spoiler on the front here, which is just kind of Velcro. It's like sticky Velcro, basically. You can buy it off Amazon. And this rubber uh, spoiler here, which is made by Full Contact Concept. I have no idea where you'd be able to find a set of these, but actually these work really well for me. I quite like the fact that they're made of rubber and they're quite grippy and that's solid on the tongue, it means that when I buckle everything up in the boot and I'm driving the front of the ski boot side to side, the tongue isn't moving around like plastic on plastic. So it's quite a nice idea actually having some kind of interface that goes between the plastic tongue and the plastic shell of the boot. For me, I quite like having that because it kind of grips onto the shell of the boot, if that makes sense. So the, the thing that I really like about this liner is it's got a really nice soft toe box around it. I find that a lot of liners kind of put pressure on my toes. I have actually had... Did you see that? The cat just fell off. Silly boy. I have actually had liners that have kind of put so much pressure on my toes that then I've had inward growing toenail problems. So yeah, this nice soft neoprene toe box is actually quite a good thing, I think. But really where these liners come into their own is the fact that you can add extra cork around the heel pocket, which means that if you've got a particularly skinny ankle, like I do, you can add more cork around the heel pocket and that's just gonna give you more of a sensation of being held down in the ski boot. You can also add cork to the tongue and it's actually really easily done to add cork. You Basically, there's a little port uh, in here and you have a tube and a plunger and you basically plunge cork into that pocket, fold it closed and it's really easy to do at home. And then once you've done that, you heat the liner up a little bit in the oven or in a microwave. They have a load of really good instructions on how to do that on their website. And then you step into the ski boot and you wear it around the house, you know, wear it whilst you're cooking or whatever. Um, and that cork kind of moves and flows and, and shapes and molds to the shape of your foot. And then you get a, a pretty good fit with that shapes and molds to the shape of your foot and so future editing dave here and i don't know if you just heard that change in the microphone sound that's because i have this external microphone like this and it stopped working halfway through recording that for some reason i don't know why uh so we're just going to use the internal mic from the camera for the rest of it so Sorry about that. Now, one of the problems that you get with these ski boots, and it's fairly well known, is they're not as warm as a thermo moldable liner. I talked about that in the liner video that I did with Sol. But for me, I pretty much always use a heated sock, no matter what the weather is, no matter what the conditions, I pretty much always have a lens heated sock uh, on, my, on my feet. And it's just nice because if I stop and I have to do something and you know get out of the snow, I can actually turn the socks on and have nice warm feet and I'm never really risking getting any damage to my toes. These liners do have merino wool on the inside and that is really a nice thing. They are nice and comfortable in there, but I would say I do notice they are a little bit colder than like an Intuition liner, for example. However, the fit and the feel of these for skiing is a lot better for me. And for me personally, I'm a lot more focused on having a much better fit and feel from my ski boot liner. So something that ZipFit have been working on for next year is this liner. Now this is like a prototype liner. This is not gonna be what the liner is like uh, for next season. But basically this liner incorporates a lot more thermomoldable foam in it. And it's really targeting that market of overnight ski touring, uh, you know, where you need a nice warm liner, perhaps your heated socks won't work because you won't have a chance to charge the batteries up, 
and you need that slightly you need slightly more insulation from the liner you need that thermoformable foam and and that's what this liner is trying to achieve it's also got the pockets in the heel and the tongue for adding more cork um, and it comes in quite a lot lighter than the GFT as well so I think this liner is target weight is around about 300 to 350 grams whereas the GFT is a lot more like half a kilo so that's another downside to the GFT liner is if you're really focused on getting weight down that's probably not going to be the liner for you. I have been using this liner in the Zero G Tour Pro and also the Zero G Peak and actually this is a size 26 liner and I've been putting it in a size 25.5 Zero G Tour Pro and that's been working well and it also fits in my size 26 Zero G Tour Peak. I'm excited to see the next iteration of this liner. I think they're going in the right direction with it so keep your eyes peeled for that one next season. I think it might be blue, but anyway, we'll see We'll see what comes of this over the next few months. So the boot mod that I was talking about before on the Zero-G Tour Pro, this is it here, it's from Raid Research. I mentioned it in the previous video and I've fitted it, put it on the boots. I've been using it all season and it's been a really good upgrade for these boots. It's put me in a much better position, a little bit more forward, which I like. You know, not everybody likes that. Not everybody feels like they need that. It does depend on the ramp angle of your binding. If your binding is flat, then you might feel that you need a little bit more forward lean on the Zero G Tor Pro. But if you have a ramp angle to your binding, you might feel like you're in the right position and this mod is not necessary. Now that subject is really complex, there's a lot more to it to what I just said and ultimately it comes down to how you feel. So if you feel a little bit too upright in your boots then it's definitely worth thinking about doing that kind of mod. But the other way that you can also do it is by adding a spoiler to the back of your ski boots as well. So that's a, a kind of easy fix for feeling a little bit too upright in the ski boot. Talking about the Nordica Doberman S, I've skied that boot a few times, not loads. I knew I wasn't going to ski it that much. When I have had it working and I've had warm enough feet in it, it has been amazing. I do really love how that boot skis and feels, but I do just find that my toes are a little bit cramped. I've tried different liners. I've tried the stock bladder. I've tried various liners like a Atomic Mimic Platinum, for example. And I've always just found that my toes just are a little bit cramped and cold. And if I add my heated sock into there, it takes up a little bit too much space. And actually with this zip fit liner in there, it feels pretty good, um, which is leading me to think that this might be the solution to nearly all of my boots. Um, yeah, having that soft toe box around the front is probably going to be what I need personally in that boot to make it kind of fit and feel better. The problem is I've added quite a lot of extra cork to this boot to, to make it fit well with the Zero G Tour Pro. So I might end up basically getting another zip fit liner for the Nordica 5S. I'm going to end up with more liners. I'm going to have to get more of this house cordoned off for me, I think. I'll have to talk to my wife about that, but anyway. I've been using the Zero-G Peak boot a little bit as well, not loads. I find that that boot is a little bit empty at the front, and I feel like just a little bit loose in it, and I know that that is probably how the, that class of boot is supposed to feel, but for me, most of the time, I'm happy to suck up a little bit of extra weight and just feel like I can drive bigger skis more easily. I haven't really experimented with skiing that peak boot on anything wider than my 94 underfoot skis. So yeah, I can't really comment on how they drive like a 106 or 108 ski. I don't feel like they would do a very good job of that. Maybe if you were skiing just perfect Colorado POW, that would be good. But unfortunately, that's not what we get in Chamonix. We get a lot of Icy moguls, crud, crust, crunchy stuff, 
some powder here and there, basically a lot of variability. And that's why for me, having a boot like this that can actually drive the skis that I'm on is more important. So yeah, that's just another boot update for you boot nerds out there. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, just a low key video this time. There's more coming out soon. For example, we're doing a video on how to put skis on a steep slope. I'm just working on that at the moment, editing and making sure that it's, uh, it's coming together nicely. I'm pretty excited about that video. I think it's a topic that people are gonna be quite interested in. So keep an eye peeled for that one. As I said, I'm also gonna try and shoot a ski video talking about the quiver and the bindings that I use as well. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the like button, give me some comments on other things that you wanna see on this channel. And yeah, I'll see you out there and I'll see you next time. Cheers guys.